and we are back <coughs> to present another piece for the actually the masterpiece of this launch in the Jeff for the Louis Vuitton time pieces. And what is this Buddy, one? Well, that's your role. I talked about the woman's watch. You're talking about that one. I thought we just talked about how watches have no gender, but okay. That is true, but still, your so time. This is the Louis Vuitton Spin Time Air Quantum, and it's, to me, a really interesting watch, which is not without a tiny bit of controversy, but I kind of like the audacity related to it. So what is Spin Time? Well, first of all, it's a watch, so if you look at it, there's 12 cubes around there. And as the minute hand progresses around the dial, it compels one of the cubes to flip around into black. So we're gonna march around the dial with the minute hand here, which is incidentally super lumen of a trid. Right, and boom. So there you go, now it's at two o'clock. We're gonna keep going, and now it's at three o'clock. And so it is both simultaneously a simple watch, but also a very complicated watch. And I kind of like these type of watches as well. It reminds me a bit of uh, my buddy Ludovic Baluard's watch as well, because it's, yeah, it's time only, but it's also taking time telling into a three-dimensional sculptural kind of kinetic um, art form effect. So the spin time was created back in 2009 by my buddies uh, Enrico Babazzini and Michel Navas of La Fabrique du Temps, right? And these guys are obviously high complication specialists, but they also want to work on things that were a little bit more modern interpretation of time. And I think this is a really kind of cool example of it. Okay, so, so the cool thing about the spin time quantum is you can cause the entire watch to light up. So by pressing the crown, the, right, boom, if you can see, all these cubes look as if they're glowing from within, but what's super interesting about it is hidden in the flange of the watch are 12 LED lights, and these LED lights are powered by two batteries which are located in the back of the watch here, which can be replaced relatively easily at any service center. But boom, there you go. You've got a watch that's got a crazy sort of light signature, amazing self-expression in the dark, or in ambient light as well. And so why would Louis Vuitton create a watch like this? Like for me, it is addressing a very specific need, right? And who is the client for this? I kind of feel the client is the guy who is going to the nightclub and buying the luminous bottles of Dom Perignon, right? It's the guy that wants to have fun. He's a connoisseur. He loves to have, you know, a good time in those beautiful things. And he wants to have something that's really playful and like- And different. And audacious. And, and, you know, of course, draws attention to himself. I mean, of course, if you do this, everyone's gonna look at you in the nightclub, right? So the question is, of course, well, Louis Vuitton, and this is where the controversy comes in, why do they use a battery-operated system for the LED lights? There's other watches that have mechanical light functions, like the Debethune mm -hmm. DB28 Grand Sport, where it's using a dynamo to create um, a charge for an electrical light. Uh, a couple of years ago, VCA did the yes. piece with the Constellation where they had an LED system that you could trigger, but um, Louis Vuitton went one step further in it because they actually, you can, you don't have to wind it up. You can actually press it several times a day and you can see it yeah, from so any, anywhere, basically. I think it stays on for three seconds if I'm not mistaken. And they yep. calculated so that if you press it seven to eight times, it will last for, or the batteries will last for three years. So if you press it like nonstop all day, <laughs> it'll probably last a year, but that's still, that's not too bad, right? Like, it means um, that you're going out quite a lot and, and you're it, spending a lot of money on Dom Perignon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're hitting all the hotspots of Majeb, all of which Eleanor basically is the ambassador of. Yeah, right? of course. Apparently she can get you into any club in Majeb, is that true? Restaurants, yes. club, places, just places. I was, I was told this story about how like she and her buddies like rocked up in like their ski gear because they just like, you know, were skiing and they, they took a sled down the mountain. Yeah, we had a fondue on top of the mountain, which is a place I truly recommend. And then you sled down right. uh, in ski outfits, obviously. And then we, and wanted, went to to, get for, we wanted to get for a drink and in the club. And they're the, like, no, guys, you can't get it. And it's like, yeah, we will. And well, hang on. That, the, the story <laughs> that I was told was like the fanciest club in Mejev and everyone's dressed up and, you know, women are in heels and whatever. And these dudes like rock up in their ski clothes and the doorman looks at them and he's like, no. Then he sees Eleanor and he's like, ah, oh, fuck, okay, fine, come on in. <laughs> You know, so that's her pull here in Majeb. But okay, let's go back to this let's watch. Let's go back to actual, actual work and talk about watches. Exactly. So the the thing about this watch also, and for me, why they used uh, a battery operated system instead of a mechanical light function is pretty simple, right? Like a, a mechanical light means that you have to wind it up each, pretty much each time you want it to display the charge. And I think for someone that's just hanging out in the club at 3 a.m. in the morning with his bottles of Dom Perignon and he wants to show his light to his friends or he wants to pass his watch around so people are just having fun, it doesn't want to be bothered by like mechanically winding his watch to have one or possibly two charges. He just wants to have fun. And I think this is a very smart expression of a watch specific to that audience. That You're not taking yourself too seriously in something very gimmicky, but at the same time very audacious and very, I mean, the, the amount of work of R&D, it took them more than two and a half years to develop the whole system. And obviously everything was developed at La Fabrique du Temps, which are, 
I mean, the manufacturer where they craft and create and develop uh, high complications. Yeah, I mean, they won uh, the GPHG um, Audacity Award last year mm -hmm. for the uh, the Carpe Diem. I mean, there's some extraordinary watchmaking going on there. And so, okay, what's cool about this um, movement is it's been a progression for the Spin Time Air. So the Spin Time Air is the watch that has the maximum amount of transparency, um, and they had to diminish the movement even to give it more space. So it started off as a movement that was like a, a 30 mm in diameter, and eventually they were compelled to make it 21 mm in diameter, at which point they were like, dude, we can't make it any smaller. But the, at that point, the creative team at Louis Vuitton was like, don't worry, we don't need it any smaller. We just it's need it to trail. light up. Yeah. Right? So that's how they drilled into the flange. They put the LED lights on there. And then they used these cubes made of fused silica. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is because when the light hits them, it looks like the cubes themselves are emanating the light, right? Which mm -hmm. is very cool. And the yellow, the re you know why they decided to, re I mean, it's kind of detail, like coloring detail, but the yellow color has been used in a lot of the spin uh, watches. Right. 42.5 uh, mm uh, in DLC titanium. So I guess the question that Last I would... Last time they're doing titanium like DLC. Yes. So for the first question I would probably have would be, Eleanor, you as the, the, the official president and of, <laughs> of Mejev, queen of all nightclubs here, if you saw a dude like myself wearing this watch in a Mejev nightclub, lighting my watch up, what would you think of me? Because I know for you, it's super important what watch a guy wears, right? Super important. I mean, super important. Yes, it's interesting to see. It gives out a personality trait of the person. Uh, wearing that watch, well, not only he's a watch connoisseur, secondly, he... He basically doesn't really care about what other people think, and he's interested in um, in movements, in development, in audacity. And I'm assuming that if he has this watch, he has other interesting watches, and it's kind of a bold choice, especially with what's happening right now in the in the in the, in the watch industry, where everybody wants the same pieces from the same brands with the same models, the same references. And right now, you're you kind of just shifting away from what everybody wants and what everybody talks about. And it's a limited edition piece, very, um, I mean, not only straightforward, I don't think it's the right word, but it's very um, um, avant-garde and uh, modern because you're mixing in modernity with traditional watchmaking. Yeah. So, yeah, I dig that. Like, I think that I like the fact that it's not taking itself too seriously while at the same time having amazing authenticity in terms of mm -hmm. the innovation of the movement. That having been said, like, and we can all agree that watches are blowing up right now, it's not the sort of hardcore connoisseur market that's growing the business uh, of watches. It's the... People who want to make investment and money in the end, but that's not what watches... I mean, it's true. It's not what watches are, are for in the first place. It has to be driven by passion, has to be driven by emotion, and you have to enjoy and like and just appreciate the time those watchmakers and those company have spent in terms of R&D and, and thinking process to create a watch like this. Yeah, and I also feel as if that there's kind of a new and, and sort of wider audience coming into watches and they want to have something really cool. As Eleanor said, they hopefully would like to have something that has um, some appreciable potential or at least retains mm -hmm. its value, which probably mechanical watches are as a category are better than a lot of other um, asset categories. But most of all, they want to have something that's cool and fun and, and self-expressive and different. Okay, so now we're going to emulate the um, ambiance of a Mejev nightclub by closing the blinds. Close together. everything. And then Eleanor is going to bring the camera closer to the watch and we're going to see how that looks. So pretend there's like music blasting <laughs> in your ears, okay, dumper in your let me, let me, let me, let me put and then on. you want to know what time is it because if you actually need to go to bed at some point. Yes, or I just kind of just want to show off. So there you go. That's this Louis Vuitton Spin Time Air Quantum, right? You know what, let me take it off and flip it around. So tell us what time it is, because right now, like you're pitch dark, you're blowing it up. Oh my God, it is 12 and 12.15. So the night is still early, we gotta keep walking. All right, Eleanor. I know. Keep on drinking, keep on dancing. Well, the funny thing is when Eleanor and I hang out, like uh, the running joke is that I'm always in bed by like 10.30. Okay, and being, you're the one drinking. I'm, I'm being generous to myself. Usually it's like, you know, 10, 15. And she's the one that can stay up all night. But anyway, both of us have our different skill sets, and I guess that's why we're complimentary. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for listening to us, and we'll be back. It was a pleasure. Peace, guys.